S Day was the date of the proposed invasion of Britain in 1940 or 41. It was supposed to be the culmination of Operation Sea Lion, the German plan to invade England. The invasion didn't happen, but it remains one of the biggest what-if questions of World War II. What if the Germans had tried to invade? Could they have succeeded? Why didn't they invade? What would have been the consequences of an invasion of Britain of, for Europe and world history? What happened as a result of the actual invasion preparations? This is the first of a series of videos that will examine the possibilities from all angles. The series will show the strengths and weaknesses of the attackers and defenders, as they are not well known and had many interesting and peculiar features. There are many problems with the Sea Lion plan and most people agree that it would have failed. We will test some of the assumptions and see if some of the difficulties could have been overcome. Some say that Operation Sea Lion was an elaborate hoax, so we'll look at that too. We'll also look at alternative plans and possibilities the consequences of the real sea lion preparations, and the possibilities and consequences of a successful or failed invasion. This video is an introduction to the series, and it also covers the plans. By June 1940, the Germans had conquered Austria, Czechoslovakia, Poland, France, Denmark, Norway, and the Low Countries, and now stood on the shores of the Channel. But this was at least a year sooner than they expected. Nobody anticipated that France would fall in only six weeks. Not even the Germans. Though an invasion of England was the next logical step and, though they had blamed Britain for starting the war and railed against perfidious Albion from the very beginning, the Nazis had made no preparations to invade Britain. This was fortunate for the British, as at that time Britain was defenceless. The British Army had been defeated and forced to leave all its heavy equipment behind at Dunkirk. There was only one fully equipped division in Britain, and there were few coastal defence works outside ports. However, the Germans had nothing to counter the Royal Navy, and no means to get their army across the English Channel. At first, Hitler tried ineffectually to get the British to surrender, but after wasting a month resting on his laurels, he issued orders for the invasion of England. Extensive preparations for the crossing were made between July and October 1940. By shutting down part of their economy and coercing the locals, the Germans achieved a miracle. They collected thousands of barges and other vessels so that they were ready in time for a September invasion. The German Navy was very conscious of its puny size compared to the Royal Navy and made it a condition of the plan that air superiority would be obtained before any crossing was attempted. If, instead of bombing London, the Luftwaffe had continued attacking the RAF, the engine factories, its bases and the radar stations, the RAF may have been forced to retreat from southeast England. Then the invasion could have happened in September 1940. However, the RAF won the Battle of Britain, so the invasion was eventually cancelled. So let's talk about the German invasion plans. There were several invasion plans, with changes being made necessary by differences between the Army's requirements and the Navy's ability to fulfil them. The German Army plan followed the usual German plan of using infantry to force a breakthrough and mobile troops to exploit it. The first plan was for troops to land between Lyme Regis and Ramsgate, but the Kriegsmarine didn't have enough ships for this. The final plan was to attack four landing zones, that is beaches B to E, on a 100 mile front between Folkestone and Brighton, with nine infantry divisions, supported by one airborne and one air landed division, and the equivalent of one panzer division. The assault troops of the first wave were split into three echelons, with the combat troops landing on the first and second days, and the rest arriving up to ten days later. The first wave troops were to advance to the first objective line and there consolidate their gains while the ports were repaired and the second wave was brought across. The panzer and motorised infantry divisions were all to arrive in the second wave and there were to be further waves of infantry to follow them, to eventually make a total of about 30 divisions after six weeks or so.